Now Motorola didn't pick a great time to launch its fresh new Moto G 5G Plus because it's hitting the UK at roughly the same time as the excellent Realme X50 5G and the fresh new OnePlus Nord phone. And those are two other mid-range mobiles offering incredible specs and of course full 5G support for surprisingly little cash. But hopefully the Moto G 5G Plus will still get the attention it deserves because this is, at least in my eyes, Motorola's best blower of 2020 so far, edge be damned. I've had this £300 smartphone stashed in my shorts for the past week and here's my full in-depth Moto G 5G Plus review. And for more of the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, it's got to be said, the design is possibly the least impressive aspect of this Moto Mobile. It's an all-plastic finish, while quite a few rivals do offer a glass chassis for the same price, which means also that the Moto is more susceptible to scratches. Although I guess, at least if you actually drop the bugger, the Moto G 5G Plus is less likely to crack into a million deadly shards. And so far, touch wood, there's only a few little light nicks on that arse end as well, although of course over time they will build up quite substantially. So I would definitely recommend slapping on the condom case that Motorola bundles in the box to stay safe. And the 5G Plus is at least water repellent as well, so it can cope with a good bit of everyday spatter. Uh, but definitely don't go submerging the thing, that just, that wouldn't end well. Those bezels are a wee bit chunky and there's next to no flair or fanciful design work here, while the pattern rear isn't nearly as fun as that swirly mind trip of the Realme X50 5G. And another slight design issue also arises with that edge-mounted fingerprint sensor, which sits really high up on that right-hand side. And it's absolutely fine if you actually clutch the phone in your right hand because you'll find your thumb just naturally falls on top of that sensor nice and easy. However, if you're clutching it in your left hand, then I did find I had to stretch a little bit in order to get my finger up there to actually get it to work. That said, over the past few days, I did learn to adjust the way I actually picked up the Moto 5G, so I grasped the phone closer to the middle, and then the sensor itself worked an absolute treat. Now, any Motorola fans out there will get a serious case of deja vu when they play with the Moto G 5G Plus, because it's essentially the same software experience as always. Nice bit of Android 10 action, with those motor experiences slathered on top. Just like a delicious gravy poured all over a mountain of golden spuds. And this serves up all of the usual nifty gesture shortcuts that we know and love and of course a bit of that Moto game time feature as well which was introduced earlier in the year which is really good news if you do a lot of mobile gaming helps to block notifications uh, fine-tune the performance things like that really keep you focused on I don't know reducing your mates to a bloody gory mess on the floor and then dipping your virtual nutsack in their face whatever it is the the kids are into these days and occasionally like on some previous mode roller phones the Android experience can be a little bit glitchy here uh, so for instance sometimes you'll tap a notification and it won't actually load up the app in question and there was one memorable occasion where that game time shortcut actually refused to go away even when I wasn't actually playing a game but of course little bugs like these are usually squashed after a month or so in the first proper update so here's hoping that they bugger off pronto. Now one of the first genuinely new features found here on the Moto G 5G Plus is the power touch toolbar. That sounds a bit pervy but what it actually is is basically just a shortcuts bar which can be summoned by double tapping the edge mounted fingerprint sensor. And like long pressing on certain app icons this can jump you into specific features like composing a new email in Gmail or checking out new videos from your subscribed YouTube channels. Including of course good old Textbird because naturally you've smashed that subscribe button as well as dinging that old notifications bell there. Right buddy? But anyway the power touch tool is alright although to be honest I mostly forgot it was even there. It's not exactly a game changer or anything. And the Moto G 5G Plus also serves up a dedicated Google Assistant key which is just one of a half dozen different ways of calling up the voice assistant in a jiffy. It's not really necessary to be completely honest and most likely just a favour to the mighty Google overlords. Kind of a shame it can't be remapped to any other app or feature as well in the settings, at least not as far as I can bloody see. But now let's admire that incredibly spacious 6.7 inch screen, which may be a mere IPS panel, but it's still one of the best you'll find at this sort of price point. The Cinema Vision display sports the same stretched 21 by 9 aspect ratio as those super long Sony Xperia screens. And as well as providing great multitasking with two apps side by side, this is also ideal for kicking back with a compatible flick. Although all the stuff with a boxy aspect ratio does end up squished into the middle of the screen with massive pillar boxes either side which is rather less amazing. However unlike Sony's glorious notch free panel on the Sony Xperia 10 here you do unfortunately get two cut out pinhole selfie orifices wedged up here in the top corner. And the Moto G 5G Plus's full screen settings don't always stop your apps from displaying around those wee buggers either. Personally, I wasn't too bothered by this, but I do know that they are still rather divisive. And thankfully, the visuals themselves are crisp thanks to the Full HD Plus resolution and pack a bit of a punch on the saturated colours setting too. 
HDR10 video is also supported, but currently can't stream HDR shows on the likes of Netflix, only on the likes of Amazon Prime Video, where you will enjoy that sharp, sexy contrast. And you do also have a slick and smooth 90Hz refresh rate as well, just like on the Realme X55G and the OnePlus Nord. So everything just looks so buttery smooth and, oh God, yeah, that's the good stuff. On the audio front though, it is just a single bottom firing mono speaker here on the Moto G5G Plus. You don't get a glorious stereo speaker setup like you did on, for instance, the Moto G5G. G8 Plus, which is a real shame. And though it's still perfectly powerful enough if you're just using the phone for a bit of Zoom chat action or to watch a bit of Netflix in the kitchen, something like that. And yay, verily, the 5G Plus doth deliver a headphone jack too, unlike that there, Realme X55G or the OnePlus Nord. And this works as expected. And you've also got a tasty bit of Bluetooth 5.1 as well, which again works seamlessly, although I did notice the odd crackle in the audio whether I was using Bluetooth or an actual connected pair of headphones as well. Usually when I was hibernating the phone, waking it back up again or switch into something like the camera app. Nothing serious by any means, it was just a little bit jarring is all. So now onto the performance and the grunt here comes courtesy of Qualcomm Snapdragon 765 platform backed by either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM. This is the model with 4 gigs of RAM and while on the whole it performed very admirably indeed I did notice the occasional surprising little stutter usually when I was streaming audio or video and trying to do something else at the same time. And one time for no apparent reason with no warning whatsoever the Moto G5G Plus just had straight up f*** it and rebooted itself as well uh, which to be fair I don't blame it I've felt like doing that since the start of 2020. Here's some of these little glitches are sorted in future updates although thankfully the 5G Plus behaved itself when gaming. Sure the Snapdragon 765 is a step down from the 765G as far as GPU speed goes despite once again rocking that Adreno 620 but while there's less emphasis on gaming here the Moto G 5G Plus still proved a match for PUBG and Call of Duty. Unfortunately PUBG did top off at the high frame rate option in other words 30 FPS as well as that HD detail setting. No HDR for you Jimmy but the frame rate was at least consistently smooth and I had no trouble picking off sniping weed bastards from afar. Take that, you stupid eight-year-old. Likewise, Call of Duty was fast and frantic with no drop frames at all, so I stood more than a fighting chance against a legion of bored school kids on their summer holidays. As with other recent Motorola phones, you also get that fresh Mortal Game Time feature that I mentioned before, and this can be summoned at any time while blasting virtual chunks out of your mates to boost the performance, block notifications, and record your mad skills. That skills with a Z, of course. And of course, you've got that integrated 5G modem as well, so you can enjoy a nice bit of super nippy streaming when it eventually spreads its way across the land. As long as the bloody tinfoil hat brigade don't burn down all the sodden towers first. And the Moto G 5G Plus packs in a whopping 5,000 milliamp battery as well, matching Motorola's own G8 power and beating quite a lot of rivals for capacity, although I found that the battery life was pretty much on a par with the likes of the Realme X55 G. A full charge will once again last you a proper hardcore day with change to spare. Most evenings I did end up stumbling into bed with around 25-30% to 30 juice remaining. And sure, Motorola's 20 watt turbo power charging might not be particularly trouser stern when you consider a lot of rivals are using 30 watt fast charge these days, but you know what, it'll get the Moto G 5G Plus pumped up when it needs it. And yeah, the Moto G 5G Plus may only come packing 64 gigs of internal storage while a lot of its big competition offers 128, but you do get micro SD memory card support here in the Moto G 5G Plus up to one terabyte in size, which a lot of its rivals have actually culled. So far, so very premium. And in fact, the main difference in the hardware versus the Motorola Edge flagship beyond the display tech is the quad lens rear camera. That 48 megapixel primary shooter captures photos at 12 meg resolution by default, using pixel binning to brighten up pics in more ambient conditions. Overall, the quality of my test snaps was good. Even at 12 megs, you get plenty of fine detail packed in there, while colors are realistically reproduced. The focus copes well with both near and distant subjects and even hyperactive kids don't pose much of a problem. Motorola's usual AI smarts are back in play here too, sorting out any slightly wonky shots on your behalf, although you can stick with the original if you prefer. When the contrast proves tricky, the Moto G 5G Plus thankfully doesn't oversaturate the final image very often, although on the flip side you also don't get much detail in those darker areas. But it is good news all around at night time because the dedicated night mode really boosts the overall quality of your pics. You've also got an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens which produces slightly darker warmer pics in general but they still look fine. And yes you do have a 5 megapixel macro lens on there as well for shooting insects and flowers at a distance of about 2 centimeters. Woo! And the final lens in this quad camera setup is a basic 2 megapixel depth sensor which helps out with those portrait shots. And again I like the results although you don't get the full set of filters that Motorola normally provides. And of course you've got the usual great selection of bonus modes to piddle about with as well including a full on proper manual 
mode, which just offers up full controls over the ISO level, the white balance, all that kind of stuff. And it gives you the ability to shoot in RAW format as well. Switch to video and you can shoot up to 4K resolution home movies with punchy colours and clear audio reproduction. I was proper impressed by the image stabilisation of that Ultra HD level too, which definitely does not suffer from puke induced and shaky cam action. And if you're a fan of the Instas, then the 16 megapixel selfie shooter does a bang up job as long as the lighting doesn't get too crazy. Your mug shots will once again be packed with detail, while there's a second 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens if you want to snag some more background action or just fit in a few mates. So are you tempted by the Moto G 5G Plus? That's my full in-depth review of this bad boy. As you can see, it's pretty good competition for the likes of the Realme X50 5G, especially if you prefer a more stock version of Android. Hopefully, a couple of those little bugs and quirks will be ironed out in a jiffy. So it'd be great to hear your thoughts. Please do slap them down in the comments below and stay tuned for my full in-depth OnePlus Nord reviews. I'm going to be slapping my SIM in that bad boy next to see how it stacks up to the likes of the Realme and the Motorola. And for more on the latest greatest tech, including that Nord review, please do plug subscribe and ding that notification notifications bell. Cheers!